Today, we're diving into a question that a lot of people have when it comes to managing their money. Is hiring a financial advisor actually worth it? Whether you're just starting out or looking to optimize your investments, we're going to break it all down for you. So let's get into it. Hey, everybody, if you're new here, I'm Marco from NerdWallet's editorial team. First and foremost, we need to understand who financial advisors are and what they do. So financial advisors help you manage your money and guide your financial decisions. They'll work with you to create a financial plan tailored to your goals. So, for example, they can help you figure out how much money you need for retirement or setting up a college fund uh, so your kids can graduate debt free, hopefully. Uh, Think of them as a financial coach or a financial guide, helping you navigate your finances from a macro point of view. So what an advisor does can vary based on their expertise or certification. So for example, a CFP or a certified financial planner, they usually provide broad financial advice, helping with things like debt payoff plans, emergency savings, life insurance, and retirement investments. But on the other hand, a financial advisor with a CFA, a chartered financial analyst, they may actually focus more on investment advice. So they could pick stocks, mutual funds, analyze the stock market, things like that. So the type of financial advisor you choose depends on what you need help with. It can also influence how much you'll pay, whether it's 1% of assets under management, which we'll get into later in the video, uh, more or actually less. So you may also find out you just need answers to a few questions to help set you on the right path in which our Ask a Nerd feature of NerdWallet Plus might actually just be what you need. It's very simple and you can save from potential high financial advisor fees, but we'll dig into that uh, a little bit later in the video. So in order to figure out if financial advisors are right for you, we need to understand how they get compensated. There are a few different models. So let's start with assets under management or AUM. So the industry standard has traditionally been AUM. Usually this is a fee. Uh, It's a percentage of the total value of assets that the advisor manages for you. So while fees can vary, 1% has typically been the standard. So if an advisor is managing $1 million of your money, their fee will be somewhere in the neighborhood of $10,000 per year. So often the percentage decreases as your assets grow. So an advisor who charges 1% a year for managing $100,000 might only charge 0.8%, for example, for handling several million dollars. So keep in mind though that some advisors won't take on clients with less than $500,000 or million dollars in assets. This is changing though, uh, but for reasons that I won't get into this video right now. The thing to know is, is that you usually won't be charged on assets that the advisor doesn't manage directly. So things like your home or your 401k, the fee often includes the cost of creating a financial plan, but not always. So keep in mind, if they're managing the assets for you, this will typically fall under their fee structure, but everyone is different. So next we have fee only. So fee only advisors get paid solely by their clients and they don't take commissions from financial institutions, which we'll get to here in a little bit. So on the other hand, fee-based advisors also charge their clients, but can earn commissions from selling products like stocks, uh, mutual funds, life insurance. This could also lead to a conflict of interest. So the key thing or the key takeaway here is to ask whether the advisor is a fiduciary. So a fiduciary is required to act in your best interest, not theirs. So according to the Investment Advisors Act of 1940, uh, fee-only advisors are always fiduciaries, while fee-based advisors might not be depending on the situation. And then finally, we have commissions. So commission-based advisors make money solely from the commissions that they earn on the products that they sell. So this could be like stocks, mutual funds, annuities, and insurance. Uh, They're more like brokers than true financial planners, and there are fewer and fewer of them these days. The commissions that they get can vary a lot depending on what they sell, often over 1% and sometimes as high as 8% for things like fixed index annuities. I would personally stay away from these types of advisors because you never know if they're a fiduciary with your best interest in mind or just a salesperson trying to put you into products that earn them a higher commission. Before I wrap up with the fees and get into whether or not a financial advisor is worth it, I want to dig deeper into NerdWallet Plus to help clarify all your options. One of the cool features of NerdWallet Plus is you get access to our nerds. Uh, Our nerds are typically financial writers, they're not financial advisors, but you can ask your questions about budgeting, uh, credit scores, debt pay down, and savings. So you can develop a plan to reach your goals quicker. Membership is just $49 a year, and aside from being able to ask us nerds your questions, you can earn cash rewards and exclusive savings. So keep this option in mind while I'm breaking down whether or not an advisor makes sense for your specific situation. 
So are financial advisors worth it? So obviously everyone's personal financial situation and the complexity of that situation is going to vary. Since we can't address every scenario in this video, let's try and put some perspective to this question. So here are some pros and cons of working with a financial advisor. So let's start with the pros. Uh, pro number one is they're able to identify financial roadblocks you're facing and help overcome them through tailored planning. Next, they can check in throughout the year to make sure the plan is still being followed and goals are being met. Third, they can talk you off the ledge when it comes to panicking or making impulse decisions with your money. Um, I know a lot of financial advisors were doing a lot of hard work during 2020, uh, during the crash. Um, I've actually myself uh, helped friends and family kind of talk them off the ledge. And then we had markets at all time highs just a few months later. So that one's very important. It's like almost having a mentor to, or a shoulder to lean on. And then finally, they provide peace of mind that you're doing everything in your power to achieve your financial goals. So they're making sure all your T's are crossed and and all your I's are dotted and every box is checked to know that you're doing the right things at the right time. So now let's talk about some of the obvious cons. The first one being fees, right? They need to be compensated for their time and effort and expertise. So fees can end up eating into your overall net worth over the duration of the relationship with the advisor. So here's a tweet from personal finance expert Ramit Sethi showing the impact of fees. So the scenario that he's describing is that you're 30 years old and you invest $50,000 and contribute another $1,000 a month. In 35 years, with a low 0.2% management fee and assuming a 7% return, you'd have over $2.1 million. But if you pay a financial advisor 1%, you'd only have $1.7 million. That's more than $380,000 going into your advisor's pockets in fees. Number two is finding the right one. So this is almost like interviewing someone to work for your small business with your business being your personal uh, finances and your family's finances. You need to make sure that the advisor not only knows what they're doing, but they're also compatible fit for you and your personality and investment style. And number three is watch out for salespeople. A lot of advisors are just glorified insurance salespeople with no advanced knowledge of investing. You need to be able to distinguish between a legitimate advisor and an insurance salesman who just calls himself an advisor. There's a lot of those out there. Uh, I may or may not have had an internship one summer in college <laughs> with one of these companies, which will remain unnamed. So ultimately choosing to hire a financial advisor is a personal decision. So you need to take an honest look at your finances, think about your goals and decide how or if a financial advisor fits into those plans. And if you need answers to your credit score, savings, budgeting and debt questions, uh, we talked about before, you may wanna try NerdWallet Plus so you can use our Ask a Nerd feature. Uh, click the link in the description to sign up and use the promo code YouTube to score 20% off that $49 membership fee. Thank you for watching. Please send this video to a family member or to a friend who's considering hiring a financial advisor.